as far as your muscle testing, one suggestion if you're saying, I don't know if I can do this, is come from first the belief, because so many people are getting great results, that I can do this and I'm mastering it. So like anything, when you were a kid, oh, I can't, you know, a little baby, I can't do this walking thing. Oh, I'll never get it. I'll never get it. You always get it, right? So the more you practice muscle testing, the better you get at it. Here's another tip. Get out of your head because if you're thinking, I don't know, I don't know, and you're focusing on that, it clouds the, it clouds the ability to test accurately. So say, I intend I'm going to get accurate and great results. Now, the person you're testing also, sometimes you need to teach them how to be testable. Actually, I was like this when I was first getting muscle tested before I studied with Goodhart. I thought it was a strength test and I was young 20 something and I said, I'm going to beat them every time. So when they push on my arm, I ah, see you can't get me a weak muscle. So you explain to the person, it's not a strength test, it's a relaxed hold. Now you also want to be going with gradual increasing pressure. Let me show you here. I've got a scale. Okay, so this little scale here. I put just the weight of my hand and then go a little more, a little more, a little more. A gradual increasing pressure. <clears throat> if you push really hard on somebody, then they come back hard. Your elbow straight and the arm more down like this, not up here. And I'm pushing right at the end of the wrist, making sure their elbow's straight so they're not compensating and their hands relaxed and I say, okay, just meet my pressure. And I, the weight of my hand, a little more, a little more, a little more. And then I'll calibrate. If you don't have a magnet, there's other ways, but a simple one is say a name that isn't their own. So unless I'm testing Donald Trump, which I haven't done yet, I have a friend that knows him very well, but I, uh, I, I have them say, my name's Donald Trump. And usually, um, almost always, they'll go weak right with that. And then I say, okay, my name is whatever their name is. My name is John. And say, okay, so now you understand the difference between an on and an off muscle. And so the more you practice this and just intend, I'm going to get great results, this works, and teaching them how to be testable, relaxed, making sure they're breathing. There's a lot of techniques and tips we sh share in the course. But the key is, I've had many people that when they finally came to the structural class and they were there for the 10 days of hands-on, they walk away like, ah, I finally got it. So that's really good when you're in supervised practicing sessions with other uh, people, then you really get that time, okay? So let's see what other questions we have here. The whole abdominal area is hard. What could be the reason? Okay, Joel. Well, sometimes hard and abdominal area is impacted fecal matter. So the thing is you always test to find out what's going on. Okay. Okay. How does origin insertion work? Um, do you think that any pain or tenderness when touching a muscle means origin insertion? Not necessarily, um, but you can always ask the body. The more you learn, the better you get. Okay, great. So I think we're good on the injury recall technique now. Let me show you that. So let's say, well, I'm going to even do it on myself to show you a real one. I don't know. Let me check my elbow. Okay. So I'm, I'm strong. See, now I'm using a finger test. This is my favorite index finger pushing on the end of the middle finger with the hand and forearm straight in this plane. Say, so give me a yes. Give me a no. Give me a yes. Give me a no. Now I'm going to check and see. I'm going to touch the elbow and arch the head back. That's fine. How about the shoulder? Oh, there it goes. See, now my shoulder's fine, but when I go back like this, that's a sign I need it. So what I can do <laughs> is I can touch the shoulder and then I'll relax the head and push on it. So I'm not using my neck muscles. Now you don't have to do the angle, ankle, but what I'll do then is I'll do my temporal tapping. Breathing. Now, I'll see what happens now. So I touch the shoulder and I go back with my head and it's strong. I should have checked beforehand 
but I was having problems with the shoulder, but it's feeling great now. It's always good to do a before and after, especially with your clients. So hopefully that helps. It, you could actually use your hand if you got it free while you're touching the thing. Now let's say um, it's an area you can't touch easily. What you could do is you could put it in circuit. I'll show you that. So putting it in circuit is separating your feet 18 inches apart. So let's say it's on my back here and it's hard for me to hold it and maybe temporal, well I could, but it's something just as an example. So I touch here or let's say it's a person that you're temporal tapping or doing their head and you can't touch their back or they can't touch it. You can touch their back if they can't find the spot where it's needing the injury recall and then have them separate their feet 18 inches apart. So I'll just do it on myself. In fact, let's see if I need it. Okay, so I'm going here. That's strong. Nope. Let's see if I got anything else. Nope. Oh, here's one. So I go like this. I'm now on my left hip. We'll do it with this. Thing. So I'm going here. That's strong. I go back here. Okay. So let's say, well, I, I want to do the, put this in circuit. So what I can do is I can touch here and while I'm touching, I can step out. Now the, the nervous system, when your feet are 18 inches apart, carries whatever else is going on at the same time, like it's still being touched. Then I can do my neck like that. In essence, I could have kept touching there, but I'm just showing for demonstration purposes. Okay, then I can temporal tap. Again, you don't have to do the ankle pull, that's just to be more thorough. <sighs> okay, so then I'll go back out of circuit, touch that area again, arch the head back, and there you go. And I'm telling you, I, the other day I was teaching a class and on a break, um, I went outstairs and I was coming up the steps and I jammed my toe. I didn't quite lift it high enough to make, go into a slate stone. I was barefoot. Jammed my toe. I fell. And now I'm, oh my God, I'm in severe pain. So I said, so I got to teach in a couple minutes. <laughs> I can hardly walk. So what I did is I grabbed my toe and I started doing injury recall technique on myself. Then I did a pain meridian trace technique that we teach in uh, the uh, energy class. It's actually in the fundamentals class too, you might remember it, where I'm stroking on the meridians. And within 30 seconds, there was no pain. Walked back up the stairs and proceeded into the class. So that's another great thing about this. You get rid of your own problems. 